It's tax day, AKA the worst day of the year. Plus, I actually agree with the woke left about something for once, and we just got some new numbers that are really bad for Biden's agenda. And also, in Brad versus TikTok, I expose a TikToker who faked being the victim of a hate crime. All that and so much more on deck for today's episode of Brad vs. Everyone, my new daily series where I take on the craziest things in our politics and on the internet from a center-right, independent perspective. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and stick around. And returning viewers, don't forget to like and comment with your thoughts as we go along. First, some really good news. We actually got, in last week, the first week week of doing this show, more than 152,000 views across episodes and clips of the show. That is way more than I expected, so thank you all so much for making it happen. Now, for a little bit of bad news, unfortunately, because of some pre-planned travel for work this week, there won't be episodes on Tuesday or Wednesday. And we'll have some other content dropping for you guys, so do stay tuned, but normal episodes of this show will be back on Thursday and Friday. Now, without any further ado, let's get into it and talk about the worst day of the calendar year. I am, of course, referring to April 15th, today, tax day for most Americans, where we have to file our taxes with the IRS. I want to just personally vent for a moment about how insane and frustrating my own tax situation is. So not only do I pay an absolutely obscene amount in taxes, most of which is, is wasted, as we'll get into later in the, in the show, but... I actually have two forms of income, right? I have a salary, then I have a bunch of freelance income on the side. And the IRS requires me to guess what my income will be for the next year coming up, and then send them estimated quarterly payments on that freelance income as we go. But of course, because it's freelance work, it kind of comes and goes, so I don't actually know. I have to kind of roughly estimate it. And if I get it wrong, they fine me. So I have to pay taxes early with pre-estimates try to guess how much money I'm going to have coming in in freelance work, and if I get it wrong, I get fined. That's a totally normal and fair system, guys, right? Let me know in the comments if you have your own frustrating tax situation. I do want to hear from you guys about this because I feel like this is something a lot of Americans can relate to. That said, there are a lot of misunderstandings about taxes among Americans, partly because the system is so complicated and obscure. So I want to go through a couple basic facts before we really dive into things. We got reporting here from Reason, and they report, the government's reach into our pockets can add up quickly. At the federal level, according to the latest data, the average income tax rate in 2021 was 14.9% up from 13.6% in 2020 and 13.29% in 2019. Wow, well, that's still kind of a lot. I actually envy those people because mine is even higher. <laughs> Add that to the state and local tax take, and that's a big chunk of money out of the family budget. That said, average rates cover wide disparities in the amounts for which people are mugged by tax collectors. And this is an important point. It really does depend a lot on your state and local tax burden and where you fall in the different brackets and all the different loopholes and exemptions. So it's really not an even or fair system. One point I do want to address is that you constantly hear this, this narrative about how the rich don't pay their fair share in America. That's not borne out by the numbers. The top 1% of taxpayers paid a 25.9% average rate, nearly eight times higher than the 3.3% average rate paid by the bottom half of taxpayers, according to the Tax Foundation, with reference to the federal income tax. We actually do have a progressive federal tax system them, no matter how much you hear about lefties popping off about how the rich don't pay taxes in America, blah, blah, blah. It's not true. They actually pay an overwhelming disproportionate amount of federal taxes. Now, the problem is that certain rich individuals or companies pay very little in taxes because of corrupt loopholes and exemptions and those kinds of things. And typically in a fair system, you would want similarly situated people to be paying the same rate, not one to be paying less because of some arcane deduction or loophole. But other than those loopholes, we do have have a system that heavily taxes the rich already. An interesting example of this is the billionaire Mark Cuban, who tweeted, I pay what I owe. Tomorrow I will wire transfer to the IRS $288 million. Wow, that's 
a lot of money. This country has done so much for me, I'm proud to pay my taxes every single year. Tag a former president that you know doesn't. Okay, so I'm just gonna ignore the little cheap shot at Trump because I don't care about that. I honestly don't understand why somebody would be proud to give so much money to the federal government and they're just going to waste so much of it. But this is an interesting example, right? Because I just want you guys to ask yourself, set aside your pre-existing beliefs about tax policy and economics and just ask yourself a simple question. Who do you think would invest $280 million more productively? Mark Cuban or the federal government? Personally, I'm going with Mark Cuban, even though I have plenty of disagreements with him. He's obviously a savvy businessman. And it's also a reminder of the other side of the ledger that people never seem to think about. They hear tax the rich and they just think about what they could do with that money. We could fund new free everything or something. But you also have to remember that when you take the money in taxes, it's not being spent somewhere else in the economy where it would have been invested in communities, in new businesses, in new jobs, or so on. Everything's always about trade-offs, and tax policy is no exception. While Mark Cuban may be happy and proud to be giving the federal government more than a quarter billion dollars, most Americans aren't so happy about turning over huge shares of their income to the feds. A poll from the Associated Press and the University of Chicago found that only 22% of Americans think they are getting good or somewhat good services from the federal income tax that they pay. Similarly, only 23% think they're getting very or somewhat good services from their state sales tax and local property tax. So almost 80% of Americans don't think they're getting a very good deal with the money they're handing over in taxes and what they're getting back in exchange. And that same poll also found that only 6% of Americans are very or extremely confident in how the federal government will spend their tax money in their best interest. When you add people who are somewhat confident, you only have 30% of Americans have faith in how the federal government is spending our tax money. And if you ask me, that's 30% too many. If I were going to sit here and list to y'all all the ways the federal government wastes our tax dollars, I'd be here all f day. So I just want to show you one example that I think is really illustrative. During the COVID pandemic, the Fed spent more money than most of us can even imagine, and frankly, they were just giving it out like candy on Halloween. In a twist that should surprise exactly nobody, an insane amount went to waste and fraud. For example, from the COVID stimulus stuff, an estimated 280 billion was lost to fraudsters and another 123 billion was misspent. These are just big numbers, right? Let me put that in context for you. That means that $2,800 dollars per federal taxpayer was lost to fraud or misspent just in this one category of spending. What could you have done with nearly three grand left in your pocket, huh? I know I could have used it. That's how seriously they handle our money and treat our money, guys. Oh, and if you're somehow still imagining that your tax dollars are being spent to help people, your Delulu is showing. According to the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, so far this fiscal year, 39 cents of every dollar paid in individual income taxes has gone just towards paying interest on our national debt. And that's just one example, so yeah. No. And it's not surprising, it's just a matter of incentives, like the economist Milton Friedman, whose quote I have behind me, famously explained. When you or I buy things and we're spending our money on ourselves, or even spending our money on a gift for another person we care about, or even spending, you know, someone else's money, like a gift card on something for ourselves, we have skin in the game to get a good deal and not waste money. But federal bureaucrats are ultimately responsible for spending other people's money on other people. That's not a recipe for frugality or efficiency. So while the status quo is pretty abysmal, it's really no more than you would expect. Let me know how you feel this tax day about sending so much of your money to the feds. I wanna hear from you guys and hopefully some of you can commiserate with me because I'm having a tough day, to be honest. Up next, I think I actually agree with the woke left about something. So the context here is that last week, the House of Representatives passed a bill, a very controversial bill, reauthorizing the federal government's ability to de facto spy on Americans without a warrant. And the ACLU, which in many categories has gone woke and stopped even fully committing to their defense of free speech, actually put out a statement that I think I completely agree with on this one. The ACLU says, the House of Representatives passed a bill today that will reauthorize 
authorize Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act for two years, expand the government's power to secretly spy on Americans without a warrant, and create a new form of extreme vetting of people traveling to the United States. When the government wants to obtain Americans' private information, the Fourth Amendment requires it to go to court and obtain a warrant. The government has claimed that the purpose of Section 702 is to allow the government to warrantlessly surveil non-U.S. citizens abroad for foreign intelligence purposes, even as Americans' communications are routinely swept up. So basically, guys, they claim that this law just lets them spy on people overseas who aren't Americans. But then if somebody overseas is talking to an American, exchanging messages or whatever, that gets swept up and they de facto get to spy on Americans without a warrant. And this isn't just hypothetical. The ACLU reports that in recent years, the law has morphed into a domestic surveillance tool with FBI agents using Section 702 databases to conduct millions of invasive searches for Americans' communications, including those of protesters, racial justice activists, 19,000 donors to a congressional campaign, journalists, and even members of Congress without a warrant. In the last year alone, the FBI conducted over 200,000 warrantless backdoor searches of Americans' communications. The standard for conducting these backdoor searches is so low that without any clear connection to national security or foreign intelligence, an FBI agent can type in an American's name, email address, or phone number and pull up whatever communications the FBI's Section 702 surveillance has collected over the past five years. This is really bad, y'all. The Fourth Amendment is very clear that Americans have a right to be free from unreasonable search and seizures, and that means that the feds, while they can spy on us if they have truly good cause, have to get a warrant. But this messed up Section 702 system has allowed them to circumvent that and just backdoor spy on us all anyway. Whether you're a progressive who still believes in civil liberties or a small government conservative type who believes in the Constitution, either way, this isn't okay. Yet the House just passed this anyway by a razor-thin margin. It was actually a tie vote, and Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, broke the tie, voting in favor of keeping this power in place. Congressman Thomas Massey tweeted, This is how the Constitution dies. By a tie vote, the amendment to require a warrant to spy on Americans goes down in flames. This is a sad day for America. The Speaker doesn't always vote in the House, but he was the tiebreaker today, and he voted against warrants. What makes this particularly infuriating is that Speaker Mike Johnson, who was a member of Congress for many years before becoming Speaker, was, as a member, always opposed to Section 702. He always did support forcing the feds to get a warrant. But since becoming Speaker, he's done a total 180 and flip-flopped and now provided the tie-breaking vote to ensure that the feds can continue to spy on Americans without warrants. Here's what he had to say to explain his decision. When I was a member of the judiciary, I saw all the abuses of the FBI, the terrible abuses over and over and over, the hundreds of thousands of abuses. And then when I became speaker, I went to the SCIF and got the confidential briefing from sort of the other perspective on that to understand the necessity of Section 702 of FISA and how important it is for national security. And it gave me a different perspective. So I encouraged all the members to go to the classified briefing and hear all that and see it so they can evaluate the situation for themselves. And I, and I think some opinions have changed both ways, but that's part of the process. Sorry, y'all, but this is some real bullshit. Mike Johnson just admitted that as a member of the Judiciary Committee, he saw the FBI's abuses of power for years and years. Now that he's Speaker, they took him into a private room, showed him confidential stuff. And guys, the people showing him this are the same intelligence community that want these powers to be continued so they can continue to spy on us. He said, look, it's really scary. Really bad stuff will happen if we have to get warrants. And now he's totally flip-flopped and changed on the view he held for years. Sorry, no. The Constitution doesn't go out the window just because intelligence spooks showed you some scary stuff behind closed doors. And remember, these are the same types that told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Crazy thing is, nobody's even saying they can't spy on Americans when it's truly necessary. <laughs> we're just saying they should have to get a warrant, which isn't even that hard. They just have to show some cause. And if they're not able to do that, how severe and how crazy can the threat really be? Let me know what you think in the comments if you appreciate Congress selling out the Constitution like this and just letting them spy on us without warrants, whatever. Or if you disagree with me, also let me know. I, I want to hear from you too.
And now let's catch up on some numbers that just came out about Biden's latest student debt plans that show just what it will really mean for Americans. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really not a huge fan of my money being taken away from me through taxes and given to other Americans. When it's somebody who's legitimately disabled or truly impoverished, you know, that's one thing. Although maybe in my ideal world, we'd have more private charities. It's like, okay, that's one thing. But I really can't stand, and this is sadly quite common, when my money's taken from me and then given to rich people or corporations. And that's what part of President Biden's latest student debt plan will do. A new analysis from the Penn Wharton budget model runs the numbers on Biden's latest plan and shows us what its results would be. Part of that plan, if you will remember, is to cancel the student loans of people who've had them for 20 years or more. That part of the plan will cost taxpayers $19 billion, but according to this analysis, the benefits will overwhelmingly flow to very wealthy households. The Penn Wharton analysis found that about 750,000 people will benefit from this, and that the average amount of debt forgiveness they'll receive is more than $25,000. Yet, and here's the kicker, the average household income of these households that will be getting this benefit is $312,000. That's right, guys. Biden's taking billions of tax dollars from us to give them to households that have salaries and annual incomes of more than 300 grand. Is this, is this a joke? Am I being punked? Is Ashton Kutcher going to come out with the camera somewhere? I don't know, man. Call me crazy, but I think people making more than 300K can handle their own bills without passing them off onto taxpayers. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for that. Love ya. All right, guys, it's time for Brad versus TikTok, where I react to the craziest and cringiest stuff from the Clock app. And today, I'm going to be exposing a TikToker who falsely claimed to be the victim of a hate crime. Buckle up, settle in, and don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, yada, 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 because this is going to be a crazy one. I just got fired for being hate crimed. Listen up and buckle up, because this one will knock your socks off. So I showed up to work. It was going to be a good day. I had the work besties on the clock and I was feeling it. It was good. Um, I walk in my first customer of the day. She um, had dark hair, big bat, about 50, um, maybe 45. And she was looking at the fragrance. It's JCPenney, the beauty. So the little fragrance area, like behind the register is where she was. And I walked over there. Her husband was about 20 feet back, kind of outside of the fragrance or beauty area. And um, I didn't talk over them or anything like that. I just kindly said my usual. I was like, hey, if I can help you find something specific, just let me know. And she like really just goes, I'm talking to my husband. Thank you. So I was like, okay, girl. Okay, just cutting in here to say I do have sympathy for people who work in customer service because people can be really rude and I wouldn't have the patience for it personally. So that does sound kind of rude. So I took a step back. I went over to jewelry where my one of my work besties is and i was just like hey like right now i have like this rude customer um quietly like there's no way anyone could have heard me and she was like no way so she walked with me back into beauty and we were just like spraying fragrances kind of just picking up a vibe and she was behind me my back was facing towards her and my work friend that works in jewelry was like yeah she was giving you like dirty glares looking you up and down the energy is not good like she was like girl no they are not and so she walked back to jewelry and I left her alone. I left them both alone. And now I was on the other side of beauty in between jewelry and beauty. And they turned the corner and she was holding a fragrance box with the alarm tag still on it. And you know, we have to check that out as beauty associates. There was no other beauty associate in beauty at the time. So I was like, okay girl, I'm gonna have to check you out. So I kindly was like, hey, um, I see you have a perfume. I can check you out in beauty. There's no one over here. And she cuts me off. She's like, I'm going to check out at the front excuse me she goes i'm going to check out at the front what do you need to follow me up there and i was like just offering and she was like here take it i'll go somewhere else so this lady's energy was so 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 crazy um i was just like yeah probably best you go somewhere else she uh, did not like that she did not like that. No, she did not. She um, started walking away and stopped, turned around back towards me. And I was just done with the conversation at this point, but she turns back to me and goes like yelling at this point, like her tone goes up 10 notches. And she's like, 
you need to go somewhere else looking like that. And I was like, mm, looking like that. This is where um, Cash's mouth kind of took over Cash's brain. Uh-oh. Um, mm-mm, she wasn't going to look like Sully and Mike Wazowski had a baby and not get told what I told her. So I said, and you look like you're from Monsters, Inc. Oh. And you look like you're from Monsters, Inc. is what I said. A Disney movie. Um, <laughs> You would have thought I called her all of the names in the book from what happened after this. Okay, so, look, it sounds like she was really rude. We only have his side of the story, but it sounds like she was genuinely rude to him for no good reason. How he looks shouldn't matter. You should always treat customer service people with respect. At the same time, as a customer service person, you are going to have rude customers and you can't lash out back at them like this. It's really thin skinned, it's really unprofessional, and it's not appropriate whatsoever. If you don't have that thick skin, I mean, a customer service job might not be for you. And I'm not judging you because I couldn't do it. I can't, I run my mouth like crazy, right? I, I, I would clap back at people all the time. So it's not right for me. So it might not be right for this dude either, but he seems to think he did nothing wrong, really. So that's all I said. I didn't even, I don't even think I said one curse word or raise my voice. And her husband's eyes lit up. I thought, this boy's possessed. He is possessed. He's about to f- me. His eyes widened. He was like, what the f- did you just say to my wife? And he's like calling me all kinds of names in the book at this point. Chasing me around beauty. Chasing me around JC Penny beauty and in my boots in my Steve Madden boots with my singed ass waist pants running around I'm being chased I am being chased I was being chased around and being called all kinds of names cuss words slurs everything and he's wanting to fist fight me he's wanting to fist fight me in jc penny beauty he's wanting to fight me and i was like let's take a step back like i was like take a step back like chill the f-. i didn't i didn't say any curse words but i was like chill like take a step back he's like no whatever and that's when my coworker finally is f- in the department and she's like She's shaking. She was about to say something. And then finally, store manager, I guess, was just walking around, saw it, came in, which I don't know how you could miss it. Um, I was being chased. Okay, this part sounds dramatic to me, to say the least. He didn't assault you. If he did, you would have been assaulted. What does this mean? You're being chased. I, I'm imagining you like flitting around in your boots. If he really was trying to get you, I think he, he probably would have got you and punched you or done whatever he was going to do. I'm glad he didn't. I really am. But this whole thing about, I was being chased. It, it's a little melodramatic for me, babe. And he, the guy bowed up to the store manager and was like all up in his face. And this is just, it was insane. And I got taken back in the back office twice. I told the store manager my side. And the second time, I guess the first customers as soon as they left in their rampage told corporate on me and corporate didn't even hear my side and i got pulled into the office a second a time a second time sorry to say that i'm the one being terminated well what do you mean i'm the one they can't terminate the customers they don't work there <laughs> i was terminated for what I was terminated, I guess, for calling a big bad bitch a Monster Zinc character. Like, and I'll say it again, like, excuse me, what? Like, did you just want me to not be an associate and help? and not stick up for myself when push came to shove, like. So here's the thing that's wrong. I'm not saying you can't stick up for yourself, but I am saying you shouldn't, and I understand why a company would fire you for this, lash back out at the customer. What you could have said to stand up for yourself would be, ma'am, you're being disrespectful. I'm trying my best to help you here. 
I can go get a manager, but I'm going to ask you to treat me with respect. And if you're not willing to do so, please leave the store. If that's all he had said, I'd be 100% on this guy's team. I'd be defending him if corporate got rid of him for that. But when you lash back out at a customer and you insult them and demean their appearance, that's unprofessional. That's not how a customer service employee should ever behave themselves. So while I am sorry these people were crappy to you and it's not okay, I'm not surprised that you got fired and ultimately from what you've said so far, you have yourself at least in part to blame. Where, what? Not me, I wasn't the one. She tried the wrong bitch. Um, still didn't even say one curse word or raise my voice. So... Okay, but she you said she looked like a she monster. Deserved, but, um... So here's the thing. This video was long as hell. And I kept waiting for him to mention the hate crime that happened. Because remember, he opened up this with I got fired for being hate crimed. And the title of this video was I got fired for being hate crimed. Where was the hate crime? Did I fall asleep for a second? Did I space out? Am I Delulu here? Like, am I the one who's losing it? Or did I just totally miss the part where any hate crime was described. Mean words are not a hate crime, babe. That's not what that means. A hate crime would be if somebody beat you up and assaulted you while calling you slurs, or if somebody vandalized your property and defaced it with slurs. Somebody insulting you or calling you slurs is not a hate crime, and that's deeply offensive to the actual people who've been horrifically, violently victimized by hate crimes. For me, it's really telling of how broken our online and internet culture is and how we valorize victimhood over truth that somebody like this could post a story like this and overwhelmingly get sympathy other than the condemnation they deserve for throwing themselves a pity party for a situation that's partly their own fault and then lying and falsely claiming to be the victim of a hate crime. I mean, this dude is like basically a gay Jussie Smollett at this point of the story. That's not like not okay to just lie and say you were the victim of a hate crime when no actual hate crime happened to you. But this person has a marginalized identity and they claimed victimhood, so it's their truth and we have to respect it. So of course, TikTok, the reception is overwhelmingly sympathetic. But not for me, babe. Not for me. I had a little bit of sympathy for you, even though I thought you were unprofessional, until the part where you lied and faked being a victim of a hate crime. That's disgusting to me. I don't know. Am I crazy? Am I the, the one here who's the Lulu? Let me know in the comments, please. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, yada, 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 because that's all the TikTok I can handle in one day without incurring permanent brain damage. All right, one last thing before we go, I'm going to respond to a couple of your comments from the last episode. One person writes, as someone who was deep into the fat acceptance mindset when I was obese, it's really hard to get over. It's hard to start being honest to yourself and facing your reality. These people are actively participating in the downfall of everyone vulnerable to this mindset while trying to change. First, I'm so proud of you for breaking free of that mental mold and working to improve yourself. I know it's not easy, but I really respect you for doing that. And second, yeah, this is my problem with the fat acceptance, the healthy at every size movement. They're lying to people and they're giving them an opt out, a cop out, an excuse to not actually meaningfully change and not actually take steps that will prolong their life and increase their health. And that's not tolerant. It's cruel. Another person said, student loans would be less of an issue if colleges and universities only offered degrees directly applicable to a lucrative career field. This is a good point, but it actually gets back to my critique of the system. Student loans under the status quo are given out almost exclusively by the federal government with taxpayer money, and they'll give you a loan regardless of what you want to study. It doesn't have to be something where you actually will be able to pay it back. You compare and contrast this to private banking, which as long as it's functioning properly, they want to make sure that you're going to be able to pay back the loan. So when they're evaluating you for a mortgage, for example, they're only going to give you an amount that they think you can afford. And they're going to look at things like your job prospects and your salary to try to suss that out. They won't always get it right, but there's an incentive to try to make sure they're only giving out money to people who will, will be able to pay it back. But the federalized system, they'll just give it out to pretty much anybody to study anything they want. And they don't run that cost benefit analysis because after all, it's just taxpayers money. That's why I think we need to move the student loan system 
system back to the privatized system where people would have to go to a bank and show, yes, I will be able to pay this back. I'm going to study engineering. The average starting salary is this. Please give me a loan. If you want to get a poetry degree or something, uh, you might have to go somewhere where you won't need huge loans or you'll have to pay for it yourself. But somebody's not going to finance you to go 200K in debt to get a poetry degree. And that's okay. That's called market discipline, and we need to bring it back. Another person says, will you please share more about your journey? Have your political views changed as you get older? So I have talked at length about this elsewhere, so I'll just give you the extreme short version. Basically, I wasn't super political in high school, and then I went into college at a super woke far left college, and I was like immediately turned off by it. So I then kind of swung to the right wing as a reaction. But as I learned more about politics, and I studied policy deeply and got involved in these debates, I've kind of come back to the center a little bit, to this center-right, libertarian-ish political perspective. That was probably about five years ago, and since then, while I've changed my mind on specific issues here or there, my overall disposition hasn't really changed. Another person described my last video as clickbait for Brad to get us to listen to his, quote, Republican views about student loans and Biden. I mean... Yeah, my videos are trying to get you to watch my videos so I can tell you what I think about the things that interest me. I'm kind of confused about what part of that is supposed to be bad. Anyway, the comment continues, Hey Brad, I get that there are things about far left gender stuff that is annoying, but the right will never love you. You will always be a useful pick me to them, never ever fully accepted. You already know this and have experienced it and will continue to do so. So this was interesting to me because I think he's kind of beating up on a, a version of me that doesn't exist. If there was a version of me that was rah-rah Team Red, that was actively endorsing and trying to get people to vote for anti-gay politicians, maybe some of that criticism might make sense. But I literally exist over here in my own little island, criticizing the left and the right, and just giving people my views on things. And while I actively clash with a portion of the right that is genuinely homophobic, and I've debated and fought with them in the past, a lot of people on the right do accept me and are fans of me. So I don't take, you know, a black and white approach of everyone on the right is bad and everyone on the left is good or vice versa. I see the world in shades of gray. But some people, like this commenter, aren't able to do that. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining me and for tuning in. Please don't forget to hit that like button. If you're still here, you must have found something interesting or insightful. So come on hit that like and comment with your thoughts. Do subscribe, even hit that bell notification so you actually see my videos. And with that, I'll see you all later.